TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, this is the Twitch channel. All you got to do is go type in that name right there or go to the link down below in the description and you can rewatch any of the lives if we do go live. Um, don't forget, we got the Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. We also got merch. Yeah, get me. I got some on right now. The link to all of that is down in the description below, man. But this is Sky Boy. The Deadly War in Northwest London. OKB versus A9. I don't think I'm familiar with none of this, but let's get into it. Okay, so we're back in Northwest London, in the familiar borough of Brent. Brent is known for landmarks such as Wembley Stadium. Okay. Brent has a population estimated to be around 339,800 people. Major districts are Kilburn, Willesden, oh, Wembley Kilburn. and Halsden, with sub-districts Stonebridge, Kingsbury, Kensal Green, okay. Neasden and Kenton. Now behind Tower Hamlets, Brent has the highest poverty rate in the capital after housing costs with 38% of households in poverty, 9% above the London average and 14% above the England average. These high levels of deprivation are something you can see in the borough every day. Brent also has the highest unemployment rate in the capital so it's of no surprise that it also has a higher than the average numbers out of work and on benefits. London's poverty profile shows that 15.8% of working age adults in Brent are out of work and on benefits and advice for renters suggests this may have increased since the pandemic. Now with poverty comes crime. Brent generally is known to have trouble with gun crime due to the sheer number of gangs warring in close proximity. In 2003, Brent was dubbed the gun crime capital of the country due to the high numbers of fatal shootings in the borough. That's 20 years ago, golly. Today I'll be discussing two gangs who are at each other's throats, OKB v A9, as well as the history of the areas they both reside in, as well as the gangs who were present there before them. Now in the Chalkhill estate where A9 reside today, in the early 2000s, another gang known as Chalkhill Boys were present. Chalkill Boys had had heavy rivalry with another gang called Press Road Crew. Gavin Green aka Peanut was the boss of Chalkill Boys. His brother Jason Green aka Coke also a member. Other prominent members were Big French, Jay, Twins and many more. Press Road member Stunts, real name Sean Stanislas, had shot Gavin Green in Harrow. Stunts shot him at close range however Where? Gavin managed to survive. This attempted murder angered many members of the Chalkill estate. Obviously. Gavin's brother right, right. Coke vowed retribution. Now a month later, on the 22nd of March 2005, Stunts was seen outside his home in Wilsden by Chalkill boys. He would be shot at point black rage by Coke and another member, mm. causing Stunts to die on the scene. One of the two weapons used in the attack was a 1943 Colt 45 pistol. The murder of Stanislas remains unsolved. But it has been claimed in court his associates in the Press Road crew blamed Jason Green, aka Coke. His associates in court blamed Coke? No, I'm just curious because I, so the members of Stunts Gang start snitching. Is that what I just heard? Yeah, I know it's what I just heard. But now in July 2006, Jason Green, 29 years old, had just picked up his son and daughter and drove them to school when suddenly two cars pulled up alongside him in a residential street in Wembley, northwest London, at 8:30 a.m. A gunman climbed out of one car and shot Mr. Green at point blank range as his son, eight, sat in the passenger seat and his daughter, four, sat in the back. The children were unharmed, but Mr. Green was fatally wounded. Now despite attempts to resuscitate him, half an hour later he was pronounced dead at the scene by a helicopter ambulance doctor. The eight-year-old was sitting beside his father in the passenger seat and the other in the That's back when two men kid. pulled up in separate cars. One fired two shots at Mr. Green who died on the pavement despite attempts to save him. When you're involved in that type of lifestyle though, that's how, that's how crazy it gets. 
The cars were later found burnt out in nearby fields. Any Press Road member anybody. Christopher, aka Tox, was later found guilty and sentenced to 25 years for his murder. Now, in the early 2010, that was like a 2003, bro, about to get out. <laughs> Press Road had become less active due to many members ending up in jail, while tension with TFL were active but would later intensify. TFL, which stood for True Family Loyalty as well as Thugs for Life, which were a gang located in Kingsbury. NW9. TFL later became what we know as OKB today. Now Sean Safinis aka Fuzi was the boss of TFL. On the 28th of August 2000, he stabbed an innocent man known as Greg Watson to death on the streets of London within a feat of more than a dozen of people oh, and not no. one of them entered the witness box at the Old Bailey. Oh, never mind. I was about to say he was trying to go to jail, but never mind. Police later appealed with the public by showing the murder on TV. The August Bank Holiday Monday, oh. Greg Watson travelled in from the London suburbs with his girlfriend, Lisa Morgan. Everyone loved Greg. Everyone. You can help but love him. He's just, you know, he's a great guy. That's why, like, I'm telling y'all right now in these days of my life, I don't even be going outside like that, man. I be cooling. I be cool, man, because, like, mistaken identity is crazy. Especially, like, when you're young and African-American in America, at least. I know it ain't the same with race over there. Anybody can be, you know, involved. But here, Greg and Lisa arrived early afternoon, met up with a group of four friends, and joined in the fun. Watching the procession, dancing to the music, absorbed by the huge crowd drawn from around the world. Eventually, Greg and Lisa and their friends started to think about heading back for home, but no one was in any sort of hurry. Five youths who'd been pestering girls who were passing by, and they grabbed at a 15-year-old in Greg and Lisa's group. What follows is one of the very few times a murder has been filmed by the police. The surveillance officer was Andrew Coles. Sean Safinis, 20, was later accused of the murder of Greg Watson. However, during trial he was found not guilty as the judge ruled the only evidence against him was uncertain and inconsistent. Judge Peter Bowman, QC, stopped the case and instructed the jury to find Mr. Sean not guilty, saying that the prosecution case rested on one witness alone. The judge said one witness evidence was unsupported by another witness, particularly 12 people who took part in an ID parade, not one of them who picked out Mr. Sean and three whom said the killer was not in the lineup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's more than enough reasonable doubt. That's Further, the principal witness admitted he had not seen Sean stab Mr. Watson at the time but only identified him after watching a CCTV video recording of the attack, said the judge. Detectives who identified almost all the witnesses seen on the chilling CCTV video of the stabbing at last year's carnival pinpoint three reasons why no one's likely to be brought to justice. Principally, there was alleged massive intimidation of witnesses, including those two who had named Mr. Sean the police's prime suspect. Secondly, there was a street culture of Halsden, Wembley, Wilsden Triangle where all suspects and witnesses live that nobody helps the police. Thirdly, there was plain bad luck. Some witnesses were generally keen to help but the sheer shock of the stabbing threw their senses into failing to see clearly who had used the knife. The police who had been heavily criticised for their softly approach to the Nottingham Hill Carnival last year are now faced with even greater frustration of failing to nail the killer. One legal source close to the inquiry said the police were remarkably dodged but the peer pressure on the witness was just too great. Now during the late 2000s and early 2010s, many TFL members such as Fuzi, Greasy, Burner etc would release diss tracks towards the Chalk Hill boys mainly aimed at the Marley sets within the Chalk Hill estate. The Chalk Hill Marleys would record and send disses back to Larger the oldest to the youngest Larger up French 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 Larger
Too. You get me, but they're all right. 15, you bunch of clowns. Oh, you're that Kinted Kakos, man. That's what I'm saying. Yo, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Now, the UK was heavily influenced by the USA gang culture by embracing the Bloods v Crips. The movement in London spread in the borough of Brent. Different areas wore red and blue bandanas, cementing their affiliations. The A team wore blue, which Chalk Hill was a part of as well as other gangs such as Stonebridge and South Kilburn. TFL were part of the SMG Commission, which included gangs such as St. Raths, Mozart and Kensal Green, which have had ties since the 90s. Now many Chalk Hill Boy members who conducted a 12-month reign of terror against residents were banned from the Chalk Hill estate. Police obtained anti-social behaviour orders, ASBOs, for five unruly youngsters who were all members of the Chalk Hill Boys. Now due to many members being locked up and inactive, a new era of gang members came through the Chalk Hill estate. They were now known as A9, which now consisted of oh, other yeah. estates, such as Hearst Crescent Estate and the Clarendon Gardens Estate. Things weren't going well for TFL either in their battle with the police. Many members were found guilty of supplying cocaine and heroin and hid their weapons in Kingsbury Sports Ground to avoid being caught by police. Their stash was discovered when one of the gang members was seen leaving a park by a police officer. Operation Trident has swept the park and found crack cocaine and heroin. Sean Stephanie, the boss of TFL, aka Fuzi, 33 of Clifton Avenue, Wembley. Amir Yusuf, 24 of Green Hill Road, Halsden. Tevin Ford, 20 from Mill Hill. Cameron Khan, 24 from Edgware. And Romaine Calendar stashed free guns, ammunition, heroin, and crack cocaine in the park in Larkspur Close. Bro, look like a young DJ Khaled. Like, if you ever go look at how, like, young, young DJ Khaled, he looks like that. To avoid detection from police. Their plot, however, was smashed when Calendar was seen leaving a park by officers from the Trident Gang Crime Command, who had him under surveillance on the 8th of January 2014. When Sean was tracked down and arrested in March, he had £7,000 worth of crack cocaine and heroin in his possession. Sean Stephanie was jailed for seven years and two months after he admitted conspiracy to supply and intent to supply crack cocaine. This ain't a real weapon that they had. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. There's no way you convinced me that they had this. And this is a real photograph of something that they was carrying around. They ain't had that rusty <laughs> That one don't even spin. The spinner don't even spin. Cocaine and heroin. Yusuf had denied conspiracy to supply crack cocaine, heroin, cannabis, but was convicted and sentenced to eight years. Tevin Ford admitted conspiracy to supply crack cocaine, heroin, and cannabis, and was handed down five years. Mm. Khan and Calendar were sentenced to 12 and 10 and a half years respectively after they were convicted of conspiracy to supply crack cocaine, heroin and cannabis as well as possession of a prohibited weapon and ammunition. Detective Constable Richard from Trident said, I am pleased that these lethal firearms and ammunitions have been removed from the streets of London. Now share Labastidi Wellington aka You get called London with a blick, it's, you're done. <laughs> Grimms was a TFL member. On the 7th of November 2015, he had been attending a birthday party in the Kenton area with other gang members. During the event, members of A9 made their way through. Now Grimms, who was believed to have been carrying a knife himself, was stabbed once in the chest by an A9 member and collapsed in a nearby alleyway. His friend was stabbed six times in the back, side, arm and leg. He was taken to hospital and given six pints of blood, which saved his life. Paramedics performed open heart surgery on Grimms as he lay on the pavement, but he died at the scene less than an hour after being stabbed. Now Grimms' mother, Carlene Wellington, gave birth to another son less than 24 hours before his murder. So the Eight Sleep is a pod cover that... That's ironic. Walker Cisse, 19 from Wembley, was sentenced to 13 years in prison after he was found guilty of manslaughter. Sentencing him, Judge Stephen Kramer QC said, 
Sisei came from a good family and was an intelligent young man who had aspirations to go to university but what he did had deprived the family of a much loved son, grandson and brother. Rimmel Williams 19 and Calvin 2 See man, just be who you are man. You was out there trying to be something else. You, you come from a good home. You got a scholarship. Just go do what you're supposed to be doing. You ain't got to impress nobody. Two, both from Wilsdon and Marlon Tudor, 23, from Neesden, were each sentenced to nine years in prison for wounding with intent. Now, in 2019, the new generation in Kingsbury took on the name OKB, which stood for Original Kingsbury. The name OKB was a thing during the 2000s. It's just that they would scream TFL more. Now the new generation would scream OKB more. Funny thing is, most of the A9 and OKB members went to Kingsbury High School. Now Drek Juan Patterson aka YS was an A9 member. On the 18th of February 2021, he was in Preston Road when he was attacked by OKB members at 11.30pm. CCTV captured the moment he was chased, then tripped up by one of the men where then four men repeatedly stabbed YS while he hopelessly lay on the ground. Attack lasted no more than 15 seconds. Now after man, the vicious attack, they are seen enough, hopping man. in a right, black Ford Mondeo. Now 16 year old Drake Patterson was found with stab injuries and given emergency treatment at a roadside before being taken to hospital on Thursday evening. But he sadly died the following morning. All in right, the early man. hours of April 8th, Police carried out warrants at nine addresses across northwest London and arrested five individuals on suspicion of conspiracy to murder Drake One, aka YS. Two of the men arrested were 21 years old, with others aged 18, 27, and 29. One of the men arrested was OKB rapper and gang member known as BR. Scotland's Yard Detective Sergeant David Pearce said the success of today's operation was the result of a collaboration between a variety of specialist met units supported by local officers. Now it didn't take long for A9 to supported by some snitches. seek revenge for the murder of YS. On the 27th of March 2021, police were called to Kingsbury Road at 11.40pm to reports of gunfire and armed officers along with London Ambulance Services arrived at the scene. Two OKB members were rushed to hospital after being shot and stabbed in northwest London by A9 members. The pair were not in life threatening condition and were later released after treatment. Police also seem to be focusing their searches outside of Pepe's Peri Peri chicken shop. No arrests have been made though. Now Tonks. There must be chicken shops everywhere in London because every time something happens to somebody, they outside a, a, a food spot, chicken shop, kebab shop, something shop. Real name Gedeon Nguadima was a G9 member and A9 affiliate. On the 4th of May 2021, Tonks was walking in Brent Cross Shopping Centre when he and OKB member BR spotted each other outside a JD Sports Shop as they both walked through a busy shopping centre. During the brief confrontation, Tonks was stabbed by BR and stumbled towards Mark Spencer where he collapsed and sadly died. <laughs> Sir, Yeah, thank you. Sir, sir, no recording, You're walking here? It's a basic now BR real name Boniface Rexon ran back into JD Sports. Good name, Boniface, okay. And when detained by security guards, claimed it was mistaken identity. Following his arrest, he dropped the knife down a drain at a police station from where it was later recovered. It's also a rumor that Tonks had previously kidnapped and hurt BR, so this may give context as to why he was so on site with it. Judge Leonard said BR was a committed and active gang member of Fugs for Life and operated the gang's Instagram account which featured people with guns. He also ran a Snapchat account and featured as a named artist in YouTube music videos with violent lyrics. The judge told him, I accept you have been subject to attacks in the past with serious violence. This is inevitable as a gang member. 
there is no evidence the deceased was responsible for that violence. Rexon, who was also a rapper, said he stabbed Tonks, who was described by his family as having a heart of gold because he feared of being attacked himself. Uh. Now, BR's explanation was accepted by the prosecution, with the murder charge left to lie on the file, instead oh, jailed for 14 years for manslaughter. 14 years when you are rumoured to have killed two people is getting off lightly. Yeah, BR will be released in 2030, according to a few sources. Now, immediately yeah, after the murder of Tonks, the gang retaliated fast with a broad day shooting. Police and armed officers were called to Church Lane at 4.15 p.m. on the 7th of May 2021, following reports of a firearm discharge with members of the public running away in horror. Thankfully, no one was injured. A man was arrested on suspicion of firearm offences. He was taken to a North London police station. Now, the beef wasn't just on roads as we know. According to A9 rapper Jigger J, he rapped in a freestyle about how he touched BR in prison. Oh, and BR is a vulnerable dasher, you got it in Java. Thankfully, until today, no one else has died. And this brings me to the end of this video. As always, I send my condolences to the family of everyone I mentioned. Make sure to like and subscribe. Most of my viewers watch but don't sub, and it goes a long way, trust me. Uncensored version of this is on my Patreon. Well, shout out Skyward, man. Tell all leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Y'all. Learning wild.